Welcome to TechPub's Mastering Mercurial series. In this production, we'll ease you into distributed version control systems and show you the one most Windows developers prefer, Mercurial. In addition to covering the basics, I'll pry off the lid and dive deep into the inner workings of Mercurial, showing you how you can flex the power of this versatile source control system. In this, the first episode, I'd like to tackle the first question that most people have, which is, why should I care? In short, the answer is an overall better development experience based on increased speed, more efficient segregation of your work by using branching and merging, and incredible reliability. I'll talk more about this over the next few minutes and then dive right into some code so you can see it in action. But first, it's important to set the stage a little bit. Why distributed source control is becoming so beloved by developers all over the world. All right, well, let's get started. And uh, what I've done created an MVC application. First thing I want to do is I want to add this into a repository. So it's a version you might right click here and hit commit or update or add or add to source control but with Mercurial you want to pop open the Windows Explorer. I want to make sure that I'm at the solution level. I don't want to add the repository in here in case I add projects later on. So I head up to my demo directory where the MVC solution directory is kept and I'm going to right click here. Go to my Tortoise HG menu and create repository. Simple enough, ask me, do you want it here? Yes, I certainly do. Good. So it's pretty much understood that if you can get away from right clicking, then that's all good. But the thing that's probably better than alt tabbing and entering some commands is to push a button. So I wanna do that right now. Let's speed this whole thing up. And so what I'm gonna do is I am going to use the HGTK command. So to show you what that is, if I come over here and open up console two, and I type in HGTK, this is, see I did it again, <laughs> HGTK. If we take a look at these commands, these are all the commands that the shell uses. Uh, and they're right at our fingertips. So you saw me use one before, which was log. There's a number of other things we can do to pop up the uh, windows that we use a lot. So let's do that, and I'm gonna close this window. So what I'm gonna do is switch back over to Visual Studio, and I'm going to open up External Tools. And this is a menu item that not a lot of people use, but it's really cool. You can see I have Git already in here, and if I click on this command, it opens up the Git shell. And what I'm gonna do in here is just open up the um, status uh, thing, so what I can do is just say HG log, and inside here, I am going to go to Program Files, Inside Tortoise HG, there's hgtk.exe. So I'm going to copy this path really quickly, close it, and put in this command backslash hgtk.exe. Good. Okay, well then I want to pass in some arguments. And for this, it's just log. If you remember from looking at our console, hgtk log. The initial directory, you want to make sure that it's going to be your solution directory because it's going to need to see the repository that's in there. Uh, for this case, I do not need to use the output window. I will show you how I can do that in just a second, but I hit apply. Good. All right, well, where is that command? It's buried right here inside of tools. You can see I now have a new menu command. If I pop this, boom, up pops my log viewer. That's great. So what I'm gonna do is go back over here and inside we want to go to default document and we're gonna open this thing up. Great, and you can see all the default documents in there. This is what are, are called whenever a directory is requested without specifying what file. Uh, and so it goes down this list, and I wanna add one in here, and the thing I wanna call is hgwebdir.cgi. Cool, now if you're wondering what is that guy, if we come in here to the Mercurial directory, this is one of the CGI files, there it is hgwebdir.cgi. Uh, this is one of the CGI files that I dragged in. Thing. All right, okay. so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to enable this, and it's now enabled, and I'm going to disable anonymous. Cool, all right. So now when we go back and we try and push, so let's come back over here. I'm gonna go and make some changes in my code, and I'll just say yet another change. Save that down, let's go ahead and commit. Another change, I know, it was spelled, that's okay. And great, so it's committed, we're gonna close. And now I'm gonna go to HG synchronize, okay. So, origin push. Now, I'm prompted with the logins. So, what I'm gonna do is I need to actually log in with my server. This isn't anything I've set uh, with Tortoise. 
Uh, it's just kind of saying, you know, server, interfere with this, please. Uh, and if someone comes through and their name is Rob, we're going to let them in. Okay, so I'm going to log in to my box. Hit OK. Oops, authorization failed. I think I goofed up my login because I have caps lock on. There we go. So now I'm going to push. And up it goes. Change set, found, added. Cool. So now, likewise, if I come over here to this repository and I refresh it, it's going to prompt me for a login, which is nice and secure. There we go. OK, cool. And so now that we're in there, I'll save the password. You can see all our change shots are up there, including my misspelled one. If I come in here, take a look at it, I can see a diff. This is sort of your own hosted little Git uh, Bitbucket much more collaborative to use something like this than working with another team. In fact, there's a little graph that we talked about yesterday. This is up publicly, well, not publicly, but publicly accessible with the right authentication. Good to go.